So all Shakespeare scholars know that Shakespeare frequently used source plays. The early Elizabethan allusion to these plays are well known and well documented. So the question is not whether these plays existed. The only question is who wrote them. Frequently, uh, when I'm asked what is the strongest proof for Thomas North's authorship of Shakespeare's source plays, I hesitate. And that's not because there's too little proof, but that there's too much. There is Thomas North's life in the Shakespeare canon, and a great and brilliant introduction to this is Michael Blanding's book, North by Shakespeare. There's Thomas North's writings in the canon, which uh, can be seen hundreds of passages, Shakespearean passages from the plays that were originally found in all of Thomas North's writings, and external documents, including satires and little-known texts that discuss Shakespeare's uh, use of Thomas North's plays. There's so much evidence here that it's difficult to know where to start. Still, within this ocean of facts, some pieces of evidence are so compelling that even when examined in isolation, they confirm Norse authorship of a particular source play beyond all reasonable doubt. These are the smoking guns. In 2018, June Schluter and I published a book on our discovery of a previously unknown handwritten manuscript source for Shakespeare's plays. The discovery made the front page of the New York Times and news reports around the world. But our discovery was not just dumb luck. The manuscript, written by George North, a likely cousin of Thomas, had been kept in Thomas North's family library. It even complements Thomas's writing. And we knew that it just might contain such an important source for the canon. We found it because we were looking for it. The passages on grief in Richard II derive from similar discussions in Thomas North's Nepo's Lives, 1602. As shown here, the borrowing is indisputable. Both describe griefs of the inward soul as being the result of a loss of perspective, as if seeing things through water and a corrupt or false eye. In the conclusion, the play even quotes the conclusion of North's passage, with the queen referring to hope as a keeper back of death who gently would dissolve the bands of life. In fact, all passages on grief in Richard II come from these same pages of Norse Nepos, and there is zero doubt that this was the passage used. A search for Dissolve the Bands of within 20 words of life and death on the more than 100 trillion web pages on Google or 40 million books on Google Books show no results except for works quoting Richard II or Norse Nepos Lives. The same is true for a search of early English books online, and while every play in the Shakespeare canon includes similar borrowings from North, this one is significant because North would not publish Nepo's Lives until 1602, which is five years after the publication of Richard II. In other words, the original author of Richard II had to have access to North's personal handwritten translation of this passage before he published it. These are the first two smoking guns, and the next video will show what we consider three smoking cannons.